Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. It's me, Thomas Love. It's been a long time since I've done one. I want to do more frequent videos in 2019. I'm already starting with it. I have a few ideas. I want to make the videos more interesting for everybody. So it's cooler to watch. It's just something that I personally would enjoy. And maybe you can even learn something. This will be something where you can learn something. It's a drawing of Todoroki from Todoroki from My Hero Academia. I have not really watched a lot of the anime, but I drew him. I, the total time was about 5 hours and I compressed it down to like 15, maybe a little bit less. So let's get right into the video and I will explain everything I do. So yeah, I start with sketches, I try my lines out. At this stage you'd see that I don't really have any idea what I'm drawing. It's... I know like the basic thing, I want him in the front and maybe something cool in the background. But I don't know if he like would stare at his hand with the fire out of it and this side will be eyes. At this stage I don't know anything, I just know that he, I want him in the foreground. In the background could be anything at this point. And I just know that I want him, so you can see the perspective is completely off. I tried to make him centered and I wanted his eyes like to look at this side. Yeah, now I'm sketching his hand. His hand is a very crucial part in the artwork. It is the main focal thing, like the main thing you want to look at, besides his head, of course. And I'm trying to figure out if he would like stare down at his hand, or maybe he would like look at something else. And yeah, I'm just trying to figure out his eyes right now. Not really their, you know, their shape, but more where they're looking at. And after the first sketch, I most likely love to do a second sketch with a little bit more detail. I even sketched in a skull, maybe you can see that. So I just have the facial proportions, right? Like I know where his teeth should be, where his eyes should be, and that way I it's really tough to mess up his head. And yeah, I'm now currently sketching in his hair. But later on I will be adding some wind, so the hair won't stay like this, it will all shift to this side. And the fire as well will go to this side. Pretty cool in the end, I really like it actually. And yeah, now I'm drawing his eyes and his body and yeah, I'm just doing a second version of the sketch with a little bit more detail, a little bit more precision. Nothing really detailed, but it does tell me a lot later on, so later on I don't really have to think anymore. A little bit, I just figured out like I want him looking to the side and I want Midoriya, like Deku, there with a powerful pose looking at him, so this will be the scene I decided at this point where he's fighting against him and yeah, now I'm going into the line work, the final line work I often have two layers for that, one final and one sketch around and if it's good I merge those layers nothing really that you should know and I turned that sketch into another sketch layer because I figured okay, I don't want his hair to look like that, I want it different and my friend saw he actually sent me some very cool um, reference images from the fight in the manga and I definitely had to use those. For example, Deku would have the pose from a manga a little bit altered, it's not the exact same. And the eyes of Todoroki are something I've seen in the reference images. Maybe I can find them again and put them in here somehow in the video. But I definitely recommend you to check out Saul as well because he's a huge help when it comes to when it comes to my Hero Academia stuff. I've drew I've drawn two images before. I will show them at the end if you want. But currently, currently he's developing his own game, his very first game. And I will put the link in the description if you're very interested in supporting a new game developer. It's a very cool game. It's his very first game, so. You know, it's it's very good for his worst game. I, I would never be able to do something like this. But yeah, back to the artwork. You can see I'm just doing line work. I'm just trying to get his hair down with the wind, as I mentioned. It's all blowing to the side. And yeah, now I'm adding the burned part of his face, which I believe is due to his father burning his face or something. I, As I said, I didn't really watch a lot of the anime. Or in the manga, I didn't really pay attention to that that much, but I think I know what it's up. There's the hand. I'm sketching in details to the suit. Now I'm adding a zipper. The whatever you call this part of the suit, I don't know. The track suits they have. Adding a little bit of folds 
the detail on the suit. There's nothing special to say here. Um, yeah, the zipper is something I always like to do, and I really put a lot of detail into it. And a lot of people like are always surprised why my images are so detailed, but in fact they are really not. You can see that my line works are not that detailed. I, at least I think they are not. I just add detail in the parts where you didn't, where you wouldn't expect it. Like you can't really detail a suit that much, but you can add a lot of detail to a zipper. So that's something I really tried to do with my art. I adjusted this pose, maybe you've seen that, I put him like more leaning to the side. I really liked it, so I kept it. Now I'm coloring. I first like to add local colors to the artwork, which is like the color without any shading or lightening. It's just what the object is like, like this is red, obviously, you can make that up. So I just like to add that first, so I have a rough thing, like every of those colors are on a separate layer and I'm fixing a little bit of a suit right now but every of those colors are on their separate layer and they all have clipping masks to them where they all are like with shading the shading is all in separate layers in the end this had maybe three to maybe 200 I don't think it's a very detailed artwork so maybe two three hundred layers in the end all named and all grouped so I do have a lot of structure in my layers but yeah now I'm coloring with hair you will notice that I colored everything red then I switched to white the reason for that is that I I will later on you will see that in a second I will shade everything in red and once the red is done and I like it you will be able to see that <coughs> that I just transfer the red to the white layer in their own colors of course, like I won't shade it with red but with a light, light blue, darker, grey, bluish, grey so you will later on see that I will just copy the the layer information pretty much from the red shading to the white shading and it will feel like it's one, one, one set of hair because I shaded it in one part so I don't have to think twice, like how does it continue? No, I just can keep on and the lines even connect, like if there's something going from here to here, it will go over the red into the white one and it will perfectly align with the other line. So that saves a lot of time and it looks just better in my opinion. I always have done this and yeah, it's something I would recommend to everybody. You will see it in a second. But right now I'm shading here the, the skin which is very important because you would don't want the hand to be too shaded here in this part or here at all because here will be the fire and here's the light source so you can't really shade his palm same with the face the fire will illuminate a lot of this and it will have a nice dramatic lightning effect which was pretty much the goal from the start i'm shading his burnt face right now that's something that's pretty easy in my opinion but i had people tweet at the me and ask how i did that um, I didn't draw the lines for every separate like crease that he has in that part, but you have to imagine them, and you can do them with shade, like with shading. It will look more detailed without looking messy. That's something all of you should do, pretty much. Yeah, there, there you see the hair. Like I will shade everything at once. After the red side, you can see I'm just doing everything as if it was red hair completely, but we all know it's not. So. Now it's a darker shade on its own layer, of course, and I will have a lighter hair color, just highlight and even lighter. And now you can see I select the stuff and I just transfer it over in a different color, of course, but it's pretty much the same stuff I've just drawn. It's very easy, you select the layer, you select the shade layer, like everything that it's in there, and just color it in, on a new layer, of course. Pretty cool. Now. I'm Shading the suit, which is maybe the easiest part of all of this. Yeah, now I'm adding a little bit of um, rim light. I forgot the name of course, almost. Ah, uh, yeah, rim light, and now I'm fixing the eyes because I, he wasn't looking at Midoriya. Now he is, which is what I wanted. I'm adding a little bit of more purplish hues to the shading. 
which in the end is like I really want cool shade shadows and I didn't want to go with blue completely so I added a little bit of purple you can see that in the white part now I'm drawing the flame a lot of people ask me about that it's just shapes as you can see I just drew a fire which looks very bad right now if you showed someone flames like this, they might look at you weird, but if you set them on, on a different blend mode, like for example add, you get this effect and it looks like fire. Blend modes are really something that you have to like you know you have to know that by heart if you want to be great at digital art. Um, play around with them, see what they can do. The ones I use the most are the first one that I use most often is multiply, then overlay, then add maybe and Lighten is something I use a lot, so you can look at them, Photoshop has them, almost every program has them, so take a look at them, play around with them, the fire for example, you can, you see, you, you were able to see how easy it really was, like I just drew some random fire shapes and put them to add and in the end you somehow have one pretty good looking fire, I knew that it would look like that because I know my blend modes, but you maybe would struggle with that a lot, so you really once you practice it, you will be able to think it yourself. <sighs> yeah, now I'm going over to the ice. And the ice is really just also some ice sh ice figures, like ice shapes. A little bit shaded. I added a little bit of white because it's very shiny, it's wet. So I added those things. And... It already looks good, but the one thing I did, I added a shade of shadow below it and I added transparency in the middle of it because ice is not really solid. Like it is solid, but you can see it's translucent. And I added little drops, you can see that, and that added a lot to it, I think. I will even add some light like snowflakes and ice particles later on, you will see those, and I think they added a lot. What I did now is I added a little bit more glow to those sparkles of fire, the little ones. In the end, when the background is in there, it will have distinguished them. Now I'm roughing in the background just to know where the colors will be, and you can see the snowflakes I talked about. Here you can see me add a little bit of sweat. I was taught by my friend Saul that sweat is something that occurs a lot with him when he uses fire a lot, and he even has his face like frozen sometimes but I didn't want to do that because it covered a lot and it didn't look that good and now I'm drawing Midoriya which you might be annoyed with me because I like to do those things I really really drew him semi-detailed it wasn't a masterpiece but I added a lot of details as you can see right now and in the end you won't really see any of those, I just blurred him out because he's not in the focus of this part like, I could add him like it was but you know it, it's not a piece about him, I've drawn him before you can check out my social media if you want to see all my other work but he is not really the, the one I want to present in this artwork so for me it's much more important to draw to the Rocky the right way and I even, you will see later on, the arm I'm drawing right now, it's way too long, so it... I, I did shorten it in the final, but you won't see it in here, I think. But, yeah. You can see how much detail I added, but in the end you won't see anything of those. You will, you will be able to make up who it is, but yeah. And you will see how rough I was with the shading, even with the hair. It's very messy. Because I already at that point knew that it wasn't going to be something that I want people to see, so... <laughs> yeah, here the shading, it's just a blue multiplayer layer with a very light blue and a little bit of overlay and glowing eyes and yeah, a rim light again, a shadow below him and he's blurred again, so you can't really see anything. But it looks like... It, now you, you will think that it's a really well drawn Midoriya, even though it wasn't, it was just a very quick sketch. I added a little bit of sh um, smoke around him and now I'm basically painting stuff in the background. I want to make it lighter blue on the right, oh, on the left, sorry. And I added a little bit of visual effects to it, a little bit of color. And yeah, I added a little bit of snowflakes again, but I added a little bit of... It's not smoke, but you know, those... 
a little bit of mist around the eyes glow around Midoriya and I think that is about it I don't know if I will add anything more oh I will apparently I think at this point I was already done with the artwork so guys if you enjoyed this video please let me know what you want to see in the future but if you want to see more of my art please let me know what you want to see in the comments I have about 700 art posts on Instagram if you are on Instagram feel free to check me out I have all kinds of stuff I take your suggestions I post stuff on my story you can vote between two artworks or even tell me completely new ideas and a lot of times I will just make those into something like you've seen right now and you can also follow me on Facebook where I post everything as well but I'm not that active but I do reply to all comments that that applies to Instagram and Twitter speaking of Twitter you can add me on Twitter on Twitter you can even send me your own drawings and sometimes when I have a little bit of free time I will even take those drawings and critique them like instead of just replying with a comment what you could have done better I will even draw over it I will take out my iPad or draw it on my computer directly and correct lines for you correct anatomy I will do a lot of things so feel free if you're an artist contact me if you have ideas leave them in the comments right here below this video even it is a place that I don't really check that much because as I said at the beginning I'm not that active on, in of you on YouTube anymore because a lot of work is more important some of you might know I work in the game industry I was always bad at wrapping up videos I just keep talking so guys thank you for tuning in I hope you learned something if you don't know something if you didn't understand something write a comment about it I will reply in the comments to you I will see you next time peace